Welcome to this video, it's Anthony Cummings and the monthly samurai videos. This month we're going to be doing samurai banners, but you can help support me by getting a copy of the Book of Bushido. So, today, this month, we're going to do samurai banners and I'm going to explain to you what samurai banners are. Next month, we're going to do samurai helmets. So if you want to join me and you want to do a video, please do a video on banners this month and uh, samurai helmets next month. Click the pinned link below to see all the other videos in this playlist. Thank you very much. Let's get on and talk about Samurai Banners. So, you've seen Samurai Armies, you've seen the banners flying in the wind and the sky in the background. And all of these images that we see in computer games, art and everything today. But what does it actually mean? What do these banners mean? Now, I'm going to be honest with you. Samurai banners are one of the most understudied aspects of samurai warfare. But not only that, they're one of the most overcomplicated. So what I'm going to do now is give you a very, very quick description of what the basics of samurai banners are so that you can start to find your way through it. Now, the art you're going to see today is actually done by Sekihitsu Shinobi, which means the shinobi that draws with a pencil, which is an excellent name. He's over at Instagram. Please go follow him. If you're on Instagram and you're not following this guy, you are losing out. His art is fantastic and he's quickly becoming my sort of official artist. So please do follow him. The first banner we're going to come across is the Nagare Bata or the Nagari Hata. Now, this means the banner that flows. And the idea is it's pinned at the top and it's not pinned at the bottom. And sometimes it has a small extra flag, a small extra one at the top. But the point here is that actually it's meant to show your prowess to the enemy. It's a flowing long banner uh, which can show your troops where you are, rally the troops, that type of thing. Now, uh, you will find this has different names in different places. It's even been called the Dragon dragon banner before now and all that so just in the middle of the army or at the center or at the command points will be this long flowing banner so that people can march on their lord now oh, the nobori batter or the nobori hatter b and a changer a b and h change around as you go along but basically this is also um the idea of showing prowess of course showing where you are where everybody is and of course you sometimes get these in uniform sometimes individualistic they generally go with the samurai to say hey here we are this is what we're doing and uh, you know we're following this place now also what you might not realize is a lot of commands are given through flags so sometimes different flags are used to move so that people can see what's going on so this is like the last flag it's quite big quite tall quite prominent on the battlefield so but we'll move on now to personal flags now the next one is Umajirushi. Now as you can see here, this is actually something that goes not always on the samurai, but around the samurai. And it means horse marker or horse identifier. So don't just think this is a fan, it's not. This is just an example. But these flags, Umajirushi, tend to be um, three dimensional. They tend to be made out of wood or paper mache, you know, that type of thing constructed and the idea is that they mark where a samurai's horse is and where each samurai is so different samurai have different umajirushi you will also hear, the, hear these called umajirushi but you know that's just the difference between g and shi um, but what it does is it it signals where a samurai is on the battlefield so his men can find him but also so other people know what he's doing because you have to remember something really want the samurai community to realize is that yes we have banners and yes we have banners on the back but they sometimes have crests on but if there is a clan there are so many members of that clan who have the same crest so what will happen is a samurai will have a back banner which obviously just in the art here we have the umajirushi on it they'll also have an umajirushi um sort of standard and then on top of that they may also have other identification marks such as helmet crests. So I want you guys to realize if these samurai did not have different ways to identify themselves, almost all the samurai from that clan would look the same. So what you find is armor is slightly different. Uh, even the back banners might be the same. The umajirushi is different. There's lots of different ways a samurai can say, hey, look at me, I'm different from my cousin, but I'm from the same clan. So just remember that. This is an important banner, which is often carried, but it's important and nobody realizes Now we it. come to the sashimono, which is one of the most famous flags. Everybody knows sashimono. 
Now, the idea here is that the Sashimono identifies the samurai. It goes on the back and it's quite a common flag. So this is how you're going to identify each individual samurai. They have their Sashimono. The rules for these are different depending on the time, the place, and it's a really complex way of looking at it. But remember, these samurai will be next to the horse or the lord on a horse with a Umajirushi. They'll have different crests. They might have different lacing colours. But we start to see now the flags building up into different forms forms within the battlefield. Now the next one which is a little bit deceptive is the Kobata or the Kohata which is this it means small flag and as you can see this is a small flag but actually this can be anything from literally a piece of cloth on your arm to a piece of cloth identif identification mark on the back of your helmet. It's simply a different way to identify who you are. So this is one of the smallest flags a samurai could use, but the term flag is a little bit loose here. It generally means, you know, um, somewhat a, a smaller identification mark. So while this doesn't cover all of the um, aspects of samurai flags, it definitely is a basics. It's the samurai flag basics. So just remember, there's big flags for the army to see. There are individual like troop flags. There are individual samurai flags. There are 3D markers. There are small markers on the samurai's helmet. This is just the beginning of your understanding of flags, but it's definitely the best place to start. If you've enjoyed this video, please, please do follow Sekihitsu Shinobi on Instagram. He's got so much good art and we're starting to build a, um, a catalogue of his art for people in the samurai community to use. And of course, as long as they tag him, we're going to start pushing this around the samurai community. So please do get in touch with him or use his art, but make sure you do tell everybody where it's from and get everybody following him. And I'm just now going to round up and let you go in a moment. So this month was a uh, samurai flag basics. So in January announced it was going to be samurai flags. And um, so in February, we've had these flags. Now, next month is March, so it's now February. I'm gonna announce next month, we're gonna do samurai helmets. So if you wanna join me, get me a video on samurai helmets. If you don't have a channel, you can upload it on my channel. If you do have a channel, just upload it and send me the link. Now, all the links for samurai flags are below. I'm going to put the um, links to the um, playlist below uh, so you can see the flags flag videos so do get yourself a copy of book of bushido all the best from me anthony cummins see you next time